Welcome to Charlotte's Wandering Web with your adventurous guide to the good times, Charlotte Tweed. Each week, Charlotte takes you on the journey of a lifetime to a delightful Caribbean locale where the sun never sets on your good life at a great price. And now with her muy amigo, Carib Carter, here's your host, Charlotte Tweed. Hello, 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 offshore club members. This is Charlotte Tweed coming to you live from Mexico. Carter is not with me today, but I wanted to share with you what we did this week in Mexico with my family. As you saw last week, my son and his girlfriend were here to visit us. So we took a trip to Chapala. We got the bus from Ajijic and it cost us nine peso per person, which is oh, less than 50 cents to go from Ajijic, which is about a 20 minute bus ride to Chapala. Went and had a lovely lunch at a seafood restaurant called, called Isla Cazumel. I had the best meal I have had so far in Mexico. It was three stuffed crab, came with salad, vegetables, and the salsa and the chips, bread for $7.50. And this crab, it was three stuffed crabs with crab meat, uh, peppers, it was fantastic. And you also got a free margarita when you ordered a seafood meal. So from there, we decided to rent a boat from the Chapala Pier and take it out to Mezcala Island, also known as Presidio Island. It's a one hour long boat ride to the island. We were surprised it took that long, but going there, the waves were very choppy. It was a rough ride. I was sprayed in my face. Brandon was sprayed. Brianna was sprayed. Daryl was sprayed and held on to the boat with the claws. It, it was fun. It was a lot of fun though. Got to the island and this island, I tell you, is a fascinating little island. If you ever come to the Lake Chapala area, take a boat trip out to Mezcala or also known as Presidio Island. The history on this island, it's, it's fascinating. It is a very important part of the Mexican War with from their independence from Spain in the early 1800s. And this war started in 1812 on this island. So there are uh, ruins out on the island of the fort, the barracks, uh, the prison. There's an old chapel out there from the time of, of this, this war. And it, the interesting thing, well, there's a lot of interesting things about it. The war started in 1812 on this island 1,000 men from the surrounding lake town areas of Chapala fended off the Spanish for four years on this island. And when Brandon and Brianna were looking at history of the island and reading about it online, they were so impressed. They said, you could make a movie about what happened on this island. But yeah, 1,000 men fended off the Spanish army for four years, basically armed with lances, sticks, and rocks. So you can imagine the fighting spirit of these men to protect their island and their towns from the invading Spanish. So a huge part of Mexican history there. And then after, I guess I should back up, the Spanish actually surrendered. They surrendered and came to a peaceful agreement with the Mexicans that were protecting this island because they were tired of being humiliated by uh, being defeated by these, these ferocious men that were warriors for their country. After the war ended, the island became a prison. So that's where the Presidio Island comes in, Prison Island. And that closed down in 1855 because of the, what do you hear a lot of prisons closed down for poor conditions, poor treatment of prisoners, lack of food, lack of resources, that type of thing. But this island, you'll need about an hour to tour around the island. You can hire a guide if you want. An English guide costs about 300 peso. Uh, is that about $15 or so to take you through? There are signs on the island that tell what the buildings are in Spanish and in English. So if you don't hire a guide, you're okay to see what's going on on the island. We had the island literally to ourselves. 
there was nobody there. There was two other people there when we got there and then they left, but all to ourselves. We had the ruins to ourselves. We could climb up to the roof of the chapel, get 360 degree views of the lake. It, it was really impressive. And there's a lot that could be done there. I think it could be an incredible tourist destination. A lot of the barracks are overrun with cactus and greenery, almost like the jungle is taking it back over. But I think there's a real missed opportunity there for tourism on, on Mexico's behalf. It's, it's a great afternoon. There's nothing out there. So if you take water with you, uh, take snacks if you want some snacks, don't leave anything behind but enjoy Mezcala Island when you go. A great day trip from Ajijic or from Chapala, from any of the towns in the, in the lake. The other thing that we did this week is we went to Tequila Town. And yes, there is a place in Mexico called Tequila Town. It is where tequila is made. The oldest distillery, tequila distillery in Mexico, which should also be in the world, is in Tequila Town. It's Jose Cuervo. So we did a tour of the distillery. Had you go through, see the whole, see the whole process of the agave, the, the, the piñas, where they put them through the, the process to chop them up, where they cook them, where they create the alcohol, do the, all the distilling. And then at the end, you get to do tastings of three different kinds of tequila. And it, it was busy. Our tour was full. They actually had to break us up into more than one group. We did the Spanish tour because the timing, the English one wasn't until five o'clock and we weren't going to be there that late. But we were fortunate we had Brianna with us and she speaks Espanol. So she did some, uh, told us what was going, what was going on as we went along the tour, which was very helpful. But that was a lot of fun. And uh, the interesting thing with tequila it's it's more of a touristy town than I expected. A lot of Mexicans go there for for the weekend to go and have fun and party and see Tequila Town. Wherever you go, there are people selling you tours, so you don't have to plan anything in advance. You can go and see people in the square are selling tours to different distilleries, uh, taking you on if you want to do a walking tour of tequila so they can explain, you know, the cathedrals, the different areas of town. If you want to do that thing, we chose to just walk the streets ourselves and look around and, and enjoy the time. And it was quite, quite busy, but quiet when we got there compared to when we came out of the distillery by the afternoon, there's a lot more people on the streets. There's a lot more music going on. There's mariachi bands. There's, all kinds of bands playing in the streets, playing to the people. The people are dancing, having fun. There's grandma and grandpa there dancing. There's mom and dad. There's the little bambinos there dancing in their little cowboy hats and cowboy boots. It was adorable and it was a, a ton of fun to watch. If you like people watching, go to Tequila Town and just hang around the square and watch the people. They also have these tour buses there that were fun to see some that look like barrels that you distill tequila in, big barrels that are bus converted into buses, big peppers that are converted into buses to drive you around. I think it'd be pretty easy to spend a day or two in tequila for some entertainment and make sure and get a cantarita, which I didn't know what that was. I've always wondered what these drinks were when you see people in Mexico walking around the street with them. They come in a clay glass like a handmade pottery and you can get ones with different paintings on them, different sayings on them. Ours just said tequila and it's a tequila drink that they make in the area with fruit juice, fresh fruit juices and fruit in it and some salt. And it's actually a, a very refreshing drink that you can just sit and enjoy in the square and just watch the people. And of course, Tequila has the beautiful cathedrals and the old buildings and the colorful building, buildings like many of the other Mexican towns do. So that's a recap of what we had in our week, this week in Mexico with our family. There's lots, you know, Mexico has so many amazing towns and so many things to see. There's day trips 
everywhere once you get here that you can go archaeological sites the charming small towns boat rides trains just about anything you want you can do in mexico so hop on a plane come on down and check it out for yourself because winter is coming winter is coming and no better place to be than in mexico and if you're not sure just think about it this way you can get a 180 day tourist visa for the asking to come to mexico that's six months where you can explore the country yourself and see if it's for you or not to become your winter or your next forever destination.